for the back row for Miss Linda Blair. Now, Linda, you know what I have to say? Because, you know, I've known you for a while, and you're going to talk about vegan lifestyle. And if anybody is a better example, I mean, you look fabulous. Here I am, all chubby and everything, and, and I'm going to have to get on board, I think. Right, you look great. All right, here's Linda Blair. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm actually going to talk to you about many different things. First of all, who was here when I was talking just a little bit ago? Got you some information. One of the questions that she asked was about uh, arthritis in animals, but it's also like people. And I talk about it's all food-based. Your diet, like Dr. Oz talks to you about, is everything to your animal's health, to your health, the more natural the food and what you put in your body is how your body is gonna react. So there is a booth here. Come in, you found it. This booth is called Cherry Cure for Pets. And they're here in the back and you might wanna look into it. It's an all natural cure for arthritis in your animals and people. So we have a couple new faces, right? All right. My name is Linda Blair, and most of you know me for the film work that I did. But as a child, I, I was raised with animals, and animals raised me, and they made me who I am today. And when I was young, I wanted to be a veterinarian. So I worked in the film business, modeling, commercials, and so on, so that I could save my money and go to school. But the film business kind of took over, and therefore I ended up in films and TV and so on for a long time. But one day I said, what about me? What about my dreams? And that's how I ended up getting into animal welfare. And one thing led to another, and eventually I started my own foundation to keep America's large groups honest and to fight the problems that I felt were not being taken care of. Everybody would give, including me, our money, our time. But yet, there was an overpopulation. Yet, there was animal cruelty. Yet, there was now, there was dog fighting. I'm like, what? This shouldn't be happening. We can do better. I worked in extreme animal uh, humane arenas. One of the things I did was I, I didn't believe animals should be used in experimentation. That time had come and gone. We no longer needed to use a soulful animal, experiment on them, the same things over and over, and then euthanize them. I felt that enough had been done and that there were other alternatives. And certainly even for veterinary care, they have so much on film at this point, you can watch. The up and coming doctors can watch a lot of these videos. They didn't need to keep experimenting on the animals. But as time went on, I was a big horse lover. And I have a friend over here, Dory, who I've known since I was 16 years old. And she and I used to show horses all around the East Coast, but here in Florida. The Tampa Horse Show, the big Tampa International Horse Show. So one day, I'm, I'm enjoying my horses, I'm working, and I turn around and I see my own companion animals in trouble. A poodle, a Labrador. I'm like, I don't understand what is happening. So in 1997, I just finished doing Grease on Broadway, and I had already had my first rescue dog, and a big pit bull followed me home. And the news media said, that dog will kill you, right? They were the, there was this beast. They were the unknown. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that dog's gonna kill me. Well, the dog followed me home, and that dog did not threaten me in any way. Its head was down. He was a big, large dog. And I thought to myself, wait a minute. 
this dog is not displaying anything. I know animals. There's nothing aggressive about this dog. So I've been lied to much about, like myself, where I was put out in the public like I was some crazy lady possessed by the devil. All the things they used to say about me that just weren't true. And that's when I started fighting for pit bulls. Well, I started fighting for them so long ago that everyone said I was wrong. I couldn't be telling the truth. And then one day, after I'd been fighting it for years, we had a thing called a breed ban start, where they started banning pit bulls in America. Well, right alongside pit bulls are Dobermans, Shepherds, large breeds, and then you've Cocker Spaniels and a variety of others. I have seen standard poodles on the list. These lists are made up by the insurance companies in America, and they define what you can and cannot have as your companion and in your home and as your beloved best friend. Love that collar. Beautiful. A Mastiff mix with a beautiful turquoise and black Beautiful, beautiful collar. Wears it well. So, years later, I have gotten involved. I now have one of the largest dog rescues in America. It's called the Linda Blair World Heart Foundation Animal Rescue. It is in Southern California. How many people do you know I rescued in Katrina? How many people know I slept two and a half weeks in the back of a truck? One thing I do well is rescue. One thing I do well is stand up for those in need. I don't need any materialistic things. I need to be there, be present, and fight for those that cannot speak for themselves. There are so many wonderful people here with their dogs, and one thing I know is you walked in here with love in your heart. You came because you're proud of your best friend, the Greyhounds in the back, I work with Greyhound Rescue New Jersey. We bring the dogs out of the tracks from Florida and other places. Beautiful animals. These animals are a gift to us. They're there when there is no one else. They're our companion, our best friend. They work as service dogs. There was some therapy and service dogs here earlier that let their person know, hey, I think something's gonna happen and I'm here for you, and they indicate. They're lifesavers. They work in the army, the military, police dogs, companion dogs. I don't think you can put a price on putting a companion in your heart that is faithful and true. So I see so many wonderful people and dogs here and a variety. And that lets me know, and pigs. I gotta tell you, I love the pigs. I had a pig called Greta Garbo. How many of you have ever been around a pig? So you know how smart they are, right? Not the ones that are used for farming, the hog. The hog industry is, is not good, people. It's extremely contaminating to uh, our waterways. They've genetically altered the animal, so it's not even what God ever gave us. And I seriously suggest not eating pigs, but instead adoring them and loving them. They're very smart and loyal friends. The other thing that happened when I got so involved between Katrina and having to buy this property, I have one of the largest kennel licenses for rescues. It's very, very expensive, but half of that is the cost of veterinarian care. And one of the things I touched on a few minutes ago was, I really highly suggest you meet with and interview your vets. What are their pricing, their loyalties, 
a small event is usually maybe a little more interested in doing what I call um, investigation. What is wrong? And it's not just about administering medicine. It might be the food. It might be other care that can be help, help the pet to get through skin conditions. I work with, I took 18 dogs and I put them on a special diet of protein, vegetables, no potato. Uh oh, we have a st standoff. Oh my God, the papillon is gonna get the pit bull. Oh no, oh no. The aggressive, the aggressor is the papillon. The pit bull is scared to death. Ah! And I found that by giving um, coconut oil and apple cider vinegar, in the food twice a day and giving them a natural antifungal, anti-yeast pill, and you can buy them at the health food store with probiotics. Probiotic, coconut oil, apple cider vinegar, and an antifungal, again found at a health food store or um, over the counter at the drug stores. These things eliminated the skin conditions that are so prevalent nowadays because there's so much fungal type driving foods in, in the animal food nowadays. And there we go. You forgot your dog. <laughs> So there are many different things that I found, but mostly find somebody you like working with that's gonna talk to you about food. If you have an emergency at three in the morning and the vet says to you, I can treat your animal, how would you like to pay the $3,000? And you say, I don't have it. I know, I've, I've been there with the Katrina dogs, one after the other, and I didn't have that 3,000, so I know what it feels like. Get your veterinarian, your, your, your care practitioners in order so that you know who to call, who will work with you if your animal is in jeopardy. So between the food, between training, obedience, all the dogs here are being so good, but I know that there are people constantly having issues with what kind of collar, what kind of equipment, what do I do for training? Remember this, an animal is meant to be with you or a pack or roaming. So we've created what I call the concrete jungle. They're left out in backyards, they're chained up, they're not fed, they are fed, they're not given any mental stimulation. Mental stimulation is the most important thing because otherwise they're bored. What does boredom do? Dig holes, eat your shoes, you get mad, you put your dog out. But there are many things that can be done. There's many books, wonderful um, information online, trainers. So that is first and foremost, exercise and mental stimulation and if there's anything, if they're itchy, they're allergic to the food. There are many different things, so there are answers for everything. Now, I covered a little bit before, and I covered it now, and I don't want to... I want to know what... Do you have any questions that you would like to ask me so that I can talk to you about issues you're interested in? Yes, ma'am, with the poodle. With the pretty poodle. Okay, now I cannot hear you. Now, now you really, you are needed. Get the mic. Now, raw foods are wonderful, yeah, absolutely. There's a wonderful book somebody gave me on the raw food diet. A veterinarian had started it. You can look it up online.
Yeah, because it doesn't make them money. Right. Yeah, they want money. Sorry. My hair, I'm thinking there's a person named Matt. I'm not. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, where's the, the most craziest fan about ever done to you? Your craziest fan. You're my craziest fan. No, 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 no. Did they say something about, um, about the movie right there? Like, you know. Well, we're just talking about animal stuff today. Okay, okay. But if you got an animal question, I'll answer it. Yeah, my, um, uh, don't worry about Thank you. Um, he asked if it's my craziest fans. And um, years ago, they were very crazy. Now they're fine. <laughs> so nobody has any questions? Just, there you go. A statement. He says, food sustains life, but love is everything. And that is true. <laughs> Do you have, you have toys and everything out? Yeah, I, I'm agreeing with this person. It, it's, it's food, they want, they're missing something. They're, they're wanting, there's something that they want. So do you give the cat grass, some vitamins? Do you have the cat grass? You can grow it, cat grass. Yeah, they, that's really important. It could be the digestion cat and cats need, their digestion is different. That's why all the cat food, this one's for groups, this one's for fur balls, this one's for the lone cat, this one's for the... <laughs> they, they give you every type of scenario on the cat food. But it's missing something, it wants something. Try cat grass. Anybody else? Yes, sir. <laughs> Here's what I've noticed with the rawhides. Let's say I give out 30, I have 30 dogs in front of me, and they're in crates. I mean, to have a rawhide, they have to be separated because I can't have an accident with a group. You know, one dog would protection, you know, my rawhide, I don't want any fighting. So in order to get their treats, they're, so they're, they're in crates. And one dog will eat a rawhide like that, no problem, swallow it. Now that dog won't digest it. This one can take a little bone and take all day long. This one can take a big bone and go, I don't want that big bone, it takes too long because I want you know, the, the, the immediate eating excitement, I want to finish it off and get the next one. I watch each dog, the ones that take their time and chew and chew and chew and chew, they can have a rawhide because they chew it and chew it and chew it. The other ones, they might just get a little stick, a little rawhide stick, and that's, that's all they're gonna get. I worry all the time, yes, about the digestion, and then you'll see them eat and eat, swallow it, and then kind of spit it back up again, cough it up, eat it some more. They're trying to get it really juicy. They want to swallow it, but the ones that have, that will just chew, 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 they can have one. I know there's, you do have to worry. The ones that swallow them quickly, they can't digest them. Now they make all the digest, like easy digestion products. Even Walmart has them, like digestibles and it looks like a bone that green or white with red chicken, whatever. 
And so there's a lot of different things they can have. Anybody else? He asked me about Nyla Bones. Nyla Bones makes a lot of different products. You again have to watch your dog. Once in a while, a piece will start to come off, get rid of it. But where did that piece go? The one thing that if a dog chews off a piece of a Nyla Bone, if they chew it off and they can, it won't pass through the final parts of the digestion and I've had to have operations done. They get stuck. Because they're as hard as a rock. Yeah, and then you throw them away and get a new one. Yeah. Some, and and if they don't, if they're not trying to chew them up and eat them, that's fine. I'm going to show you a couple things. Earlier I was talking to you about when I used to stand up for Pitbull. This is my first dog, Sunny Boy. You have to come to the table to see him. That's a dog that followed me home and scared the living bejesus out of me. And I realized this dog is not trying to hurt me. And that's when he saved my heart. My mom had died. My dogs had passed from old age. This dog saved my heart. And that's why I am in, in, forever indebted to him. Riley was a puppy, the first puppy I saved. He's now a senior and I was talking about cancer and food. He was diagnosed with double uh, form of cancer last year. He's not supposed to be here. So I prepared myself for October to be crying, November, Thanksgiving to be crying, Christmas, New Year's, my birthday, Valentine's Day, I still have him. The work I'm doing holistically with this person, he has him on, so there's a probiotic, there's a liver cleanse, there's the, the antifungal is the most important to stop the fungus. The cancer then has nothing to feed off of. Anyway, he's still alive and it's a miracle. This is Riley when he was strong. And this is my, my, the dog that I use for all my anti-dog fighting. Because it isn't the animal, it's always the person. And in good fun, we invented, we created, these are my rescue dogs doing fun Florida sports. So of course we know a dog can't parasail and they can't ski do and they can't water ski. But I wanted, I envisioned them having a better life than being chained up. I envisioned them having a better life than some of the horrors that I see. So we called it, it's okay to dream to dream of something better. It's only online for two weeks. It's a charity, um, it's a ch ch charity fundraiser. The paperwork is over there. They're limited edition. I just wanted to make something that was positive and happy instead of all the sadness that I live with. Here are my fabulous t-shirts available for donations. And there's the men's. Yay! And here's my book, Going Vegan. I wrote this in 2001. It hasn't changed. It's become, now it's become in everybody's minds. They have seen something about veganism somewhere. Yes, sir. Yeah. The holistic person that I'm working with does both animals and people. And it's Chinese medicine and Chinese beliefs, but they do tend to live a little longer and healthier life than we do. So he explained to me that potato is starch turns into sugar. The body does not digest sugar. It goes straight through. Everyone has fungus in their body. The body, he said, will jump in, it wants to feed, but it's feeding off of sugar, and the fungus gets stronger. That's what the cancer, everybody has cancer cells in their body. I have read and read and read. Whether they stay, oh, sorry. 
That's the big pit. I'm gonna protect you from the pit bull, Mom. No, I will. I really will. No, no, every time a pit bull goes by, it's like, So, he explained that the cancer feeds off the fungus. That is what will make a cancer cell turn malignant, grow into something where, on more of a vegetarian and plant-based diet, I mean, I'm constantly reading to affirm what it is. I am 55. I've been a, veg I've been a vegetarian since 1988 and a vegan since 2001. There has to be something to it. And so you can read a, you know, a lot of stuff online and stuff. This is just an easy guidebook to understanding the food, where you can buy it, cause and effect, why, how eating animals, basically the amount of water that farming animals uses that could have been used for you and your drinking water. That the amount of water used in farming animals is so extraordinary and we need, our water is precious. The contaminants, pollutants, the, the, uh, all of the, uh, in order to farm animals, you have to use a lot of chemicals because of the, of the flies. Well, that goes into the skin and then goes into the body. And that, of course, is what you're eating. So obviously I'm opposed to the way that we farm animals in what they call factory farming. I think we have, I'm hoping we have some dogs having fun, chasing that silly thing around. Anyway, there's some wonderful booths here. There's great products, there's rescues. Maybe somebody you know is looking for a beagle. You got your pit bulls, you got the pit bull kiss booth. All of these donations go to help the groups here. And you've got the, the pit bull t-shirt company. A portion of their proceeds goes to Linda Blair World Heart Foundation today. You've got, well, you got doggy kissing booths everywhere. But support everybody that's here. Enjoy yourself. Love your animals. Please come and visit. Make a donation so we can continue on the path to making America, helping America heal and having a great life with the animals that we so love and our man's best friend. God bless. Thank you so much for coming to the Tampa Pet Expo. Thank you.